Hey, it's Jared. In this video, I'm going to compare two different 3D printers from Creality. We have the Ender 3 3D printer over here. And we have the Ender 3 V3 SE on this side. And these are 3D printers that I've been working with my son on. We started out with the SE, but had some issues with our first SE that I addressed in another video. And the issues that we were having with the SE led us to pick up one of these because I thought, well, if the auto level might be causing the problem, I would rather manually level the print bed. And so that's why we ended up going with this model. Of course, it had tons of good reviews on Amazon and there's loads of reviews and information about this 3D printer on YouTube, which the SE did not have as many reviews and it definitely didn't have as much information on YouTube. So we ended up ordering this one. Of course, we had to assemble a lot more with this printer, which was fun. I enjoyed that process of assembling it and putting it together. But as we started printing with this and manually leveling the bed, there were issues that we were having. There were alignments and different things that I had to figure out on this 3D printer that definitely changed quite often that I just didn't have to deal with on the SE. So first, let's talk talk about the things that I encountered on this printer. Now, I'm not brand new to 3D printing. I have a 3D printer that I've been using for, I guess, over a year or so now, and I don't print on it a ton, but I've got it pretty well dialed in and I know what to expect with that 3D printer. But with these printers, they're different than the printer that I have. I was definitely more used to a manual bed where I can adjust the bed levels myself and not rely on software to do it. And so I thought that I was going to feel more comfortable with this printer, but there were some issues that we had and I wanted to talk about those and why we ended up going back to another SE and how I ended up finding out why we were having failed print issues with the SE. And of course, like I said, I address those in a different video. So with the three, definitely a tried and true 3D printer that they've sold a ton of and there's a lot of people using this printer. And once you have this printer figured out and dialed in, it works really well. However, as a beginner, and I was trying to let my son do as much of this stuff as possible, Possible so that he would learn and figure all of this out. This printer was definitely a bit more of a challenge and not just simply because you have to manually level the bed. Manually leveling the bed on this printer can be a little bit challenging because the springs, they just don't have a lot of tension. And so as you make adjustments here, the some of the finer adjustments just aren't there because the springs don't seem to have a lot of tension. I did make adjustments to the vertical switch to give us a little bit more room. And these are things that I just had to kind of figure out. That wasn't information that was in the manual so that we can get more adjustment play with those springs. Finally, though, we did get this dialed in and we were able to get consistent prints out of it. But being that there's a little bit of play in the carriage here, it doesn't matter how tight you get it, there still ends up being just a little bit of play. And over time, I felt like we had to continuously make adjustments to this 3D printer to keep it dialed in. We couldn't just run a print and then run more prints off of it. We felt like every time we even touched the bed at all, we had to realign and make adjustments because things just came out of alignment that easy. And that was kind of frustrating because we were used to having auto alignment with the SE. So like I said, after we got everything dialed in, tolerances, checked everything more than twice, even had some failed prints that we had to recover from, we were able to get good prints out of this printer. Now it prints fast, it prints accurate, but it's only as accurate as your settings are with the bed. There's no compensations there. If the bed is off, you're going to have a print that fails almost immediately or maybe even later on in the print, which is definitely frustrating. So this particular printer is going to require you being a little bit more attentive to it. It's not a set and forget kind of printer. When I would run a print here, we typically would watch the print for a second just to see if our bed alignment was fine. And we might even need to make little fine bed adjustments to the height as it started printing. Because because even with our best attempts at aligning the bed in each corner, it seemed like things might just be a little off still. And so making little turn adjustments as the print started definitely worked out. And it was great to be able to make those adjustments because otherwise we would have to restart everything and start over again, which definitely wastes a lot of time. So from the factory, the print bed here is not magnetic. It simply just sits on top and requires these clips. I really like the magnetic print bed because it just makes it easy to get the thing off and put it back on and you don't have to worry about these clips being
getting in the way. It never fails that when I go and put the print bed back on and put the clips back on, that later on when it comes time to align things again, I end up having to move a clip around. It was just really frustrating to have to deal with that. These days with the magnetic, it's just much better. And I know you can buy a magnetic kit for this, but we just didn't do that. The clip's definitely kind of annoying. So a magnetic kit would have cost probably about $20, $30 to add to this and is a must have for this particular printer. It just makes it so much easier. Loading new filament can be a little bit trickier here just because of this mechanism. You have to really have things aligned. Make sure you have a 45 degree cut on your filament so that you can get the filament into the tube. It's definitely a pain in the butt and takes a little bit of finagling sometimes. It's not as simple as the print head on the SE. So that process was a little bit annoying too. I also found that this printer just has a lot more things exposed, a lot more wires hanging out and things that could potentially get snagged and even get caught up in the motor on the back end here that the other 3D printer just doesn't have. I definitely like the all-in-one kind of contained setup that this particular printer has compared to this version here. So overall, the Ender 3 is a fantastic printer. I mean, for the price, you simply can't beat it. It does a great job. You just really have to stay on top of your maintenance and make sure that nothing comes out of alignment. Let's talk about the 3 V3 SE. Our first printer had some issues. I think what it was was that some things were loose from the factory. And then as we continued to print on this printer, things just got more more loose and as they became more loose tolerances increased and then our print started to fail and I talk about that and how I fixed that issue in another video it's definitely not a big deal it's just general maintenance and things that you have to pay attention to with this printer what I love about this printer is that the assembly was extremely simple uh, only a couple of bolts that you need to put in you have this printer up and running in like 10 minutes it's absolutely fantastic the fact that it comes with a magnetic print bed is great that just makes it easier to get prints on and off we're not putting any pressure on anything. We're just simply lifting up and pulling our print bed off and simply reapplying it, the magnetic process, very easy. The killer feature of this printer is the auto align feature. It will auto align the print bed and it doesn't actually make any adjustments to the print bed. It goes through with a sensor and measures 16 different points and records those points to the memory. And then as it's printing, it is adjusting and making adjustments to the print head to compensate for the inconsistency in the leveling of the print bed. And so that means that your print bed is going to be accurate every single time. Now, with a recent software update to this particular printer, there is now an option for the printer to check every single time that you go to print. It will not run a complete auto align, which is checking 16 different points and including the heat up and everything can take a bit of time. It simply checks the four corners to make sure that those measurements are the same as what it measured last time and has in its memory. If they're not, it will go through and do an auto alignment, which I absolutely love because if it needs to do it so that we don't either have a failed print or a print that doesn't come out perfect. So the auto align feature, definitely a time saver. I spent a lot of time, probably a good three minutes or so aligning the bed on the Ender 3. And we have to do that every single time because even putting a little bit of pressure to get these clips off and then removing the print bed is going to make an adjustment and make it out of alignment. And adjusting the print bed has to happen every single time on the Ender 3. Whereas on the SE, the auto bed alignment test will go and check and then align if it needs to. Absolutely fantastic. Saves tons of time and also removes all of that margin of error. If you just can't see the alignment perfectly and you get the alignment off here, you aren't going to know until the thing starts printing and the thing starts making a mess. I also noticed that everything just seems much more accurate and tight on this unit, whereas on the Ender 3, I can move the carriage up and down just a little bit. I cannot do that on this model. It is solid on both sides and it also has all thread running up and down both sides, which helps it be much more stable as well. Whereas on this printer, we have the all thread running up one side and nothing to hold this side except for pressure. This side can have a little bit of movement and that can throw off a print if this comes a little bit loose or something just has more tolerance than it should. I love the fact that on this printer, we don't have as many cables hanging out. We have one main ribbon cable that comes up and this does go up and down. There's extra play here because as the print carriage moves up and down, it needs to be able to compensate here. So this does hang out. And then we have one off the back here of course, for the print bed that's going to move forward and backward. Those are the only really exposed cables that we have here. So there's a lot less going on, a lot less to worry about 
on this printer. Our filament also goes directly into the print head, and so we don't have to worry about it going through tubes and going through different things. The print head handles everything here. So your filament goes down into the print head, the motor that advances the filament is in the print head, and everything is managed here, which definitely is much better. And there's a lot less margin for error because the motor that adjusts and moves the filament and advances the filament back and forth is very close to the nozzle itself, whereas on the three here, the advancing motor is way back here. It has to push filament all the way through the tube and down into the print head and the nozzle. And so there's a big distance here between the two. Now, I haven't really noticed much of an issue with the fact that this setup is the way that it is. The prints that we're going to look at look very much the same, very close to the same. The main differences between these two printers is just the maintenance, the setup, the configuration, all of that stuff. But the prints, as long as everything is aligned properly, are all going to look good. So other benefits of this printer is the fact that it uses an SD card. It also has a USB-C on on the side of it as well. Whereas the Ender 3 uses a micro SD card and also has a USB type B plug, older type of USB for connectivity. So this is a little bit more modern over here. And I'd say with the SD card, it's much easier to get an SD card into your computer without using adapters and stuff like that than it is a micro SD card. So absolutely love that. Both printers are easy to check the firmware and update the firmware. You simply download the firmware from the Creality website, load it onto your SD card, and then run that software update, which I highly recommend you check from time to time just to see if there's new software. Because the feature on the SE that allows the printer to check the four corners right before it starts a print was not in the software when we first got our SE. It came in a later software version. So you definitely wanna check because Creality is adding features to these printers that make the experience better. And of course the prints more accurate. So let's take a look at some test prints. I've got two test prints that I ran here. These are files that I just simply downloaded off of Thingverse, loaded in, and we did the slicing with the Creality software. And so before you know which one is which, just giving you kind of a look here, just so that you can see the quality of these prints. They're almost, indecipherable. You can't really tell the differences between these. If we look at them really close, everything looks really good on these prints. There was really no difference that I could tell other than the very base layer, the first layer that it threw down on the print bed. Everything else, including kind of the detail between these tight areas right here, there was a little bit of stringiness or whatever you want to call it between both of these printers produce that in between both of these areas, but nothing too crazy. It was very easy just to kind of pull that off. The tails, everything looks very much consistent and the same. So if you had to guess which one was which, which one do you think came from the SE and which one do you think came from the three? Well, I wrote down on the bottom, this one came from the, the SE over here, which I put VE, I meant to put SE, because uh, the name is just so weird on this one, I forgot the numbers, but this is the one that came off of this printer, this one came off of this one. So as you can see, prints are extremely consistent and almost the same, you wouldn't really be able to tell a difference. So I decided to go with a little bit bigger of a print, another file that I just pulled off of Thingiverse, and at first, I thought that there was going to be an issue because there is an issue with the actual print file right here. You can see it's kind of chewed up or it looks a little chewed up. And I thought that maybe it was the printer that did that, but it wasn't. It was just the file itself, probably as it was converted in the Creality software created a problem there and it didn't turn out perfect because the same inconsistency happened on this one over here. As you can see, we've got the same inconsistency here, kind of choppy print on this corner. So whatever happened, happened when it did the slicing, it did not do a perfect job. But if we look at both of these, we can notice maybe tiny little differences up here at the very top. We have a little bit of separation here as well, but it's not as bad. So a little bit less separation, but overall they look pretty good. Now I did uh, right on the bottom. So you can see that this one is from the SE and this one is from the Ender 3 over here. And if we look at the base layer, we could see that there are a little bit of difference with the base layers as well. There's a little bit more separation here around some of these edges than there is on this one. There is a little bit of separation there, but all of these other edges look pretty good. And there's a little bit right here that I probably would not be happy with, but it's not really that bad. This one, it has some choppiness all the way around these uh, three different sides here. 
and then some good spacing separation here as well. This was a print that as it started, I made some minor little adjustments because as the printer started to print that first level, I could tell that the bed needed to be moved up just ever so slightly. And so I made that adjustment at the last second as it was starting to print that first layer. But overall, both of these prints look pretty close to the same. The differences are very minor and you wouldn't really be able to tell the difference between either of these prints. It would be hard to guess which one came off of which printer. It really comes down to which printer is easy to run when it comes to a print. When it comes to a print, you simply load a file into both of these. That's a pretty easy process. You load the file onto your SD card, you put it in the printer, you turn the printer on and wait for it to warm up, it's ready to go. But with the three, you have to go into a specific setting to have it take the print head to a home position and then turn the motors off so that you can manually move the print bed and the print head around and make those adjustments. That takes a bit of time. I found that it took me on average three to five minutes to align the bed on this printer and that's time consuming, especially when over here on this printer, it will automatically run that process. And as it runs that process, I can do whatever. I I don't have to be paying attention to it. It will run that process. And yes, it does take somewhere between three to five minutes for it to run its auto alignment process. But once that's done, it's ready to go. And the next time that I run a print, it has all of those settings in memory and it can check to see if the alignment is still good and if the alignment is good, it will just start to print. If the alignment needs to be reset, it will go and do an auto alignment again. That saves me a ton of time and babysitting of this printer. And it definitely makes the experience a lot better for my son as well, who's more focused on creating his own prints more so than dialing in his 3D printer. So for a little bit more money, you get a printer that I believe is a much better product than the three. The three is great. It's a tried and true printer that with attention to detail, you can get great prints every single time. But the 3 V3 SE is definitely a printer that is a little bit more set and forget. You can lean on the software to make those measurements, to make sure that everything is accurate. Yes, there's maintenance that you need to do to your printer, just like you would with this model, to make sure that those tolerances don't get out of whack. But the 3 V3 SE is a better overall 3D printing experience than the Ender 3. Both great printers, better experience over here with the SE. So I've got links down in the description below to both of these printers should you wanna check out the pricing and some of the other features. There are definitely differences in the way that each of these print, the amount of time it takes to complete prints and stuff like that. There are little differences there, but nothing so big that I felt like I needed to mention it in this comparison. Do you have any experience with these 3D printers? Share them down in the comment section down below. If you have any questions, you can ask them down there as well. Check out the links in the description as as I mentioned to these 3D printers, including some tools and some filament that my son and I use in these 3D printers, and we've gotten great results with them every single time. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you back in another one soon. Take care.